And I think we are all, we all already know the bot lane matchup we're going to end up with here as the Zaya immediately hovered. We knew that that was the way that had to go. I think the more interesting one is Bo getting this Olaf. So certainly when I see Olafs, I tend to want a strong bot lane duo to play around. Now, you've got the Zaya there, but certainly the support counter pick, which we will get here, is going to be far more important for me. Leave that counter pick for Nuggerin for that last spot. Let's look for a support that can match up against this Leona, and Rel fits in perfectly. All right, so two hard-engaged tank supports here to back up LWX and Wink on these carries. We've got our jungles locked in as well. A lot of power farming, a lot of ability to play through the lanes here. But now FBX on the band phase. What do you want to see pinched here, Dagda? Which pools do you want to see them try and remove? I honestly think we start to look at this. So Doombie has been playing a heap of bruisers like the Renektons, the Kleds, uh, either sets as well in towards the mid lane. He's still playing a lot of set and solo queue. So I wouldn't be surprised to see FPX go for another kind of bruiser in this mid lane. Allow that count, like the set, so then you can't actually counter pick it in the mid. Leave that counter pick for Nuggery in that next rotation. And they can then have this Zaya be the premium damage dealer on this team. I don't know why. But I'm just going to throw this out there. I've got a feeling Doombie's going to play Silas this game got an AD jungler and an AD carry already. I think he wants to go AP, and I just have a feeling that Silas is the answer there. We'll wait and see if that happens. It's a random prediction, but Aatrox gonna be banned away on the side of FPX, and now IG could well look towards a second mage ban towards Doombie. Something like the Orianna would be a perfectly reasonable ban. Yeah, we've Jason seen the, the Orianna come in, the Jace banned away from Nuggery. So IG look like they're setting up for an R pick, honestly. You've got the uh, Lucian that's been banned away, Jace now banned away as well. And I don't know if Nuggery has picked up something like the Shy's Callista, but if he has, you could go for that counter pick. But certainly this spells to me, IG are looking for this Rene or this NAR for the Shy. Well, the Twisted Fate is locked in. This is a oh. pick that's massive over in LEC and Irelia is the answer on the side of IG. That looks like it might be Rookie's Aurelia in the mid lane as the cannon locked in, you'd assume, goes up to the Shy as one of his absolute classic picks. Yeah, it's the big, big pick for the Shy where he's aimed to have these massive impact moments. And honestly, with a lot of the ranged top laners taken off the board, like the Jace, the Lucian, there's not many that can really run into it and still have a good time. You can see Nuggery considering going for the Lulu, but I don't think that's the call here. I think you take the Orn. You've got a very clear uh, phase here for doing me to just go right. I'm going to go play around this bottom side of the map, take a weak side top laner. We'll get LWX start up on this uh, Zaya, and we can look to play those front to back team fights later on. All right. Well, we've had an incredibly quick draft here, Dag, to talk me through what has happened here because we've got some really excited picks with this Aurelia for Rookie in the mid lane. We've got the Shy's Kennen, Nuggery on this Gragas that he's looked so good on, and Doombie on this roaming mid laner. That is the bread and butter Doombie style. Yeah, I, looking at this Aurelia means we're going to be looking towards some kind of 1 4 split push in the later portion of the game. Like having the rest of IG grouped up so they can try and make these big plays happen. But it starts with getting Rookie ahead in this mid lane. And that's what we were talking about already for Shun. Shun loves to play towards Rookie in these early stages of the game. So expect more attention again towards this twisted face when if you're not taking cleanse, you become very vulnerable to these Aurelia stuns into the follow up damage that can come through from this Lily. I am excited for that mid lane matchup, but I'm even more excited for what happens on the top side of the map because it doesn't really matter which champions they've got. You know for a fact that Nuggery and the Shy are gonna go at it in the top side. And I'm expecting the junglers to perhaps want to participate in that one to, to stop it going too far awry. But Bo and Shun, both rookies coming into these squads, both hyped up from the LDL and wanting to go toe to toe. Last time these two junglers faced each other, it was in the LDL week number eight, and it was Bo that came out ahead. We'll see if he can repeat that performance as we head into FPX versus IG. Game number one.
We are on to Summoner's Rift for what is inevitably going to be an exceptionally exciting series. And this is one of those series, Dagda, that when you look at the standings right now, when you look at the recent games for both IG and FPX, it's incredibly difficult to predict. On standings alone, on feeling alone, I'd say FPX are a minor favorite, but minor is the key word. Yeah, it is very, very difficult to call these teams, especially when it really does come down to performance on the day, down to drafts. There's so little that is separating these two teams. And I think we're going to see that certainly in the early stages of this game. And although we are kind of hyping up the shy and nuggery, I actually don't think we're going to get a lot of jungle attention towards that top side. At least when I look towards FPX, I imagine that Bo will start in this bot lane, our bot side, clear up top, look for that reset and look to interact with this bot lane working with doombi having that level six to get lwx ahead and start stacking up these early dragons whereas for ig i feel like you're gonna see shun playing pretty heavily towards rookie making sure rookie is ahead because when we get to that later portion of the game where doombi is split pushing trying to see if he can get picks with this ultimate if rookie is in a position to run doombi down that twisted fate can't have as much presence in the side lane as fpx would like just right while we're at the start of the game i want to quickly point out that both do and b and the shy have spellbook so when it comes to these drakes when it comes to barons later in the game you have got four different smites to potentially watch out for keep your eyes on these players because they're the kind of players that pull those plays off as well you see the level two spike gained for wink and bowland which means they can zone away the fpx bottom lane here in crisp Managing to dodge away from the Void Seeker. That would have been a huge chunk of damage with the stacks of plasma. As Rookie starting to shove a little bit. Actually, no, I think the wave is pushing towards him in the mid lane there. Uh, which is fantastic for Rookie, simply because you will struggle to crash this wave against Doombi if you overshove it. And that would leave the opportunity for Bo to try and get in towards this gank and try and set things right. But Bo, he hasn't All gone right. for the full clear that Olaf's usually going for. He's going for this top lane play. The Shy flashed on and knocked back. Has flash available himself, but might have to opt out of using that one. Slowed up. Does go for the flash. Lightning rush as well. Can Bo chase this one down? Undertow goes wide, and the Shy survives. And this is why the Shy is a different breed, this split. That last Shy from last year, he would have died. He would have gone down. But this year, the Shy is managing to absorb this pressure so much better. And he will just about manage to eke his way out of that and Rookie pushes the mid lane out a little bit, gives Shun priority on this top side. Scuttle, they could even move towards the bottom side if they want, but I think Shun wants a little bit more as he moves in towards the jungle of Bo here. Won't find anything, just going to be scanning for wards. Move in towards the mid lane, but don't be, you'll be able to back away safely from this one. He can go to that bottom side, go towards the Scuttle crowd. That's the big one. It's the double scuttle coming in for a Shun. Bo, because he showed on top side and didn't actually get anything for it, now you've got Shun, he's gone for this super fast clear, would get both these scuttles and can then enter back in towards this bottom side and just keep farming up a storm, getting ahead of Bo and trying to make sure that Bo can't go for these early dragons, which as you can see, are going to spawn in just over 45 seconds. So we talked about how Olaf wants to go for early drakes. With this double, double scuttle, does that mean that Bo actually can't just enact that win condition? Is it like a, this is no longer a win condition available, or do you think FPX might still try and force that? It's more so about the the timing that you need for Bo to make that work. Because look at that bottom lane right now. It's shoved right the way in. You're not really going to be able to do too much with it. Being spotted moving in towards that dragon as well means it's nigh on impossible for Bo to actually try and sneak that away solo. So it just means that it slows this whole game plan now for FPX of trying to get those rolling. FPX maybe can't go exactly the way that they want to go in this game. But Bo has cleared his jungle and now he's looking for a play towards this mid lane here. Rookie jump into the minions, but it's a flash forward for the stun from doing B. Undertow slows Rookie, but he's still got flash. He's going to be fine. In fact, he's going to go for it all in. Onto doing B. He finds himself the kill. It's one for one right now as it's jungler versus jungler. Olaf gets pretty good when he's low health, but Shun can kite this one out. Or can he? The Undertow's come on through. Who's going to win it? The rookie junglers. And it's Bo that swings down the axe. Bo manages to get the perfect undertow to set up that play, but TP's and oh Crisp is here. God. 
All right, Rookie's okay. He's got the home guard for the TP. He's fine. Gets underneath this tower. It looks like things will fizzle out a little bit. So nice play from FPX to turn that one around. A gorgeous stun from Rookie to set things up, but they tried to turn around, and now the Shy is in trouble. Uh-oh, no flash available, no level six, and well... We knew how that one was going to end before it even began. Now Rookie's in trouble as well. Bo trying to chase him down, but the stun is beautiful. Rookie looking for wolves in the middle of this fight. He pays for that with his life. Rookie, I don't know about that one. I'm pretty sure he was out safe. Yeah, a bit of cookie brain coming into that one where he could have just walked out off the stun and the slow from the Vanguard's edge. Now you've got Rookie set two kills behind. The Shy is being camped by Doomby and Co. And may not let up here. Crisp is still here. They're looking for repeat dive as he comes back to lane. No way did they get this. Nuggery has his ult available. The Shy still not level six here. Shun looking for doing B. He can move up towards the rest of his team. Before this fight... Oh, hang on. Balance flashing for it. We've got a fight on our hands once again. Doing B's just baiting. I don't think IG can actually force this one. FX are going to walk away. I want to quickly move your eyes to the scoreboard here for a second because there have been five kills on the side of FPX. Bo has four of them. This rookie jungler that we're talking about expectations for is looking incredible. He's going to be forced away from his Krugs. But you know what? I think he's doing okay for God. I don't think he's too worried about that. And the big thing is, even though we're not seeing the early dragons come through, FPX are still making these early plays happen. And a lot of that is coming through, as we said, Bo working in tandem with Doombi, but Doombi also getting up towards this top lane. Now, this is going to be an issue for IG because as this game goes on, they still need to be the ones in the lead. Rookie needs to be strong enough that he can play both team fights and side lanes, but mid is still getting action. Doombi takes a hefty slap there. From Shun, but Crisp is on the scene. So just backs him away. Gives him a little cheeky thumbs up as well. And just letting him know that he knew exactly what was coming. These guys, I don't know how much they scrim each other. But I love how much they are going toe-to-toe. -to -toe and how well these two teams are reading each other in this game. But it's FPX who are reading IG better. The plays coming through from Bo, getting those deep control in to actually catch out Rookie and steal away some of these camps on topside. Like, look at how far ahead Bo is right now. Not only from the kills, but he's nearly got his Gore Drinker. This Olap is going to be huge in these early fights. Valan goes in for the 2v2. Crisp taking a lot of damage, but he's fine with the aftershock. It's going to help him there. Wink dodges the route from LWX. The 2v2 is over, and now the Shy wants the 1v1 on the top side. Ults the wave down because he knew. He's about to be dived by doing B. He's just going to get his recall off. But this was to buy space as Bo starts off the Herald and Shun will trade with a dragon. This is actually totally fine for FPX, though. Bo is going to look to use this Rift Herald to break open this top lane turret, open up the map, allow Doombi to become that side lane pressure. Whereas IG, they're trying to force into these fights. So getting these dragons, trying to stack them up and make sure that it eventually they can force FPX into these objective fights. But right now, breaking open the map for FPX is the first call. Oh, and Shun has been found as well. While they get a tower on the top side, they get a kill on the bottom half of the map. FPX are rocketing ahead. They are 4,000 gold ahead, Dagda. We're nine minutes in. FPX have come in swinging. They have not stopped from minute one in this game. Plays in towards the mid lane, getting Doombi ahead. Bo has been everywhere on this map. And honestly, I expected this to be the other way around. Bo has been quieter than we've seen from Shun. Shun has been the one that's been so aggressive with Rookie in making these roaming plays happening. But FPX have taken that style, they've turned it on their head, and they are beating IG across the map. I mean, Honestly, Dagda, it's not looking that close so far. We've had exciting skirmishes, but it's been FPX that find big advantages every single time. Now Bo, at 10 minutes, already has a Gold Drinker and Tier 2 boots. This Ola is the thing of solo queue nightmares right here, and he ain't stopping anytime soon.
And here's the thing, you've unlocked Nuggery from topside. They can now look to make plays and solidify even more of these plates, more of these towers. Now, with Shai pushing the top lane back out though, Nuggery will go and collect, but expect him to go back down into this mid, into bot lane, and solidify more advantages for FPX. WS gonna be able to clear the wave so that no potential Ooh, knives Shai? through. Nuggery wants the 1v1, the Shai's lightning rush is denied. Has flash available. Nuggery trying to find his opportunity. All comes out from the Shy. Denies the 1v1. Defensive play from the Shy keeps him alive, but Nuggery putting the pressure on. You can see the mind games that are happening back and forth here, though, as you're holding on to that ultimate as the Shy, but Rookie chasing down Nuggery. Oh, the Vanguard's Edge misses. It's going to be the flash out from Nuggery, but ultimately surviving, and that's what's important there, is Doom B will be able to get himself late in mid lane. Sleep onto Nuggery now. He's in a 1v1v1, apparently, as three of them come for him, and it is finally Shun that will take down the man in the top lane. Look at the bot lane, though. FPX don't want to let this just run away with it. They're trying to see if they can get in onto this bot lane dive, but the wave has been cleared out by IG, so they turn their attention potentially towards the shy in mid lane. The Shy has no ultimate available. They're just going to look for the tower instead as he lightning rushes out of the top side. There's going to be at least one plate here with bow. He might be able to turn it into a second one as well. A couple more autos will do the trick. So even if they don't get a kill... Oh, no, the plate didn't go down. Oh, that's so unlucky. One more auto would have done it. I was going to say even without a kill, it's 320 gold, but I guess it wasn't. It's just 160. The thing is though, these are now the top turret down for IG. Mid lane turret is barely left standing, two plates and a bit left on that. When you start to look at like the next Rift Herald play that can come about, you pop that in towards the mid lane, another turret down, more of the map to open, but FPX? Ragnarok to get out from bow. As he lost the smite fight, Sean managed to get the big wraith for himself. Drake coming up in a minute and a half though, Dagda, and it doesn't feel like IG are just giving this map up. No. Now, they're angry. They've been slapped about a little bit. They want to make sure that they are making this point that that is not acceptable. However, it's going to be kind of tough. Like, FPX now, we talked about how much control they have. They can off this reset, put Doombi down into the bottom lane, send LWX mid, still have Nuggery playing in this top side, and look to try and create pressure with LWX towards that terror, while also having Doombi available at all times to go for these destiny plays. And I just love looking at the player cams in this series as well. I'm looking at Doombi and Rookie, and while they're communicating with their teammates, you can see the smiles on their faces. It's one thing to be one of us, one of the spectators in this series. I can't even imagine how much fun it must be to be one of these legendary players, knowing you're in a legendary series against other legendary players, and knowing how great this series is going to be. It must be an unbelievable feeling for these guys. And you can see it in their play, especially on the side of FPS. And you've got to be excited, right? When you know that you're going into this level of competition, you get to prove your worth against some of the best players the LPL has ever produced. However, this is looking a little bit dicey in the bottom lane. I'm yeah, keeping it a couple of tower shots there. Maybe not necessary. Dragon's coming up, though. Yeah, but look at the items. LWX, Kraken Slayer finished. Wink hasn't completed that first Mythic. Honestly, there's... Four Mythics on the side of FPX. There are one on the side of IG. They don't want to fight this right now. All these early shenanigans, all this 4,000 gold lead has been invested wisely, and now the dividends are coming in. Doom B. Yeah. be able to make attempt number two happen on this mid lane tower. No plates to be denied this time around. The red card ain't it. Double stun from the Shy, and now Doom B is just eradicated. Put them to sleep and take them down, says Shun, as they chase down onto Nuggery as well. Rookie maybe wants to dive. He's not going to commit to it just yet. Needs Bowland to go first, but now the counter play on towards this mid tower. The Shy knocked underneath, flashes over into the Wraith pit and keeps himself alive. Now Shun, chase down. LWX has a lot of damage with this Kraken Slayer. He wants to keep going, but Rookie was waiting in the wings. Takes down LWX, but he's... No, he dashes over the wall. What a play from Rookie to get himself out, but now being chased down by an angry, angry Viking. There's a Blast Cone there. Undertow doesn't quite connect. Nuggery's trying to head them off, but they jump over. They get over the Herald, and they get out with murder. God damn, they get to the lifeboat, but they're still going, Doombi! Doombi gets the stun card onto Rookie. Can't quite finish the kill, who dashes over to the blue buff. And now the Shy's got in, but he's to- The Shy! What are you doing, man? Stop 
stop it! You had already got out! You had made the escape! It was the Italian job! You'd made it away with the money! You'd made it away with everything you could have wanted! But that step too far now gives that kill back to FPX. Now you don't have the pressure as IG to go towards this Rift Herald and you cannot get this gold back in your favor. But my god, this game is explosive! <laughs> This is so much fun. The gold lead was 4,000 earlier on in favor of FPX. Now it's down to 2,000. Still in FPX's favor, though, as they grab themselves a Rift Herald to work with here. It's a dragon apiece. Next one in three minutes. And they're shy with a bit of a weird TP at the end of the fight, but it's fine. It's not the end of the world. Uh, had he had his ultimate available, maybe that would have been a better play. But regardless, that was beautiful from Rookie oh, to be able wow. to escape. Bowland really wanted that control ward, but... I think he might have overextended for that one. He is Leona, though. He is basically invincible. Still surviving for now. Will eventually go down as the rest of FPX collapse. This means, though, FPX can get this mid lane turret. They toss down the Rift Herald. Maybe a bit overkill, but still, this is what they wanted to do. Now they can break up the map as... Wink. No green making an attempt of a solo kill there onto Wink, who's basically forced out of the play at this point. This should open up the mid tier two now for FPX who just snowball games out of control right now. Their tempo play reminds me of 2019 once again. Do and B. Belts underneath the tower here. Can't quite finish the tower off though. The autos don't go in. There's a stun as Rookie jumps onto LWX. Takes the first kill of the fight and he's looking for more as well. Does go down though for his trouble. And it's actually going to be Bo to follow. Two for one now in favor of IG as they chase down for more. The shy this time. It's the flank that he wants. Forces the flash out from Do and B. Can't close the gap. And now it's on to Crisp, who's waddling through the jungle like he's got something in his trousers, and he's going to go down. Oh, God. Chris does pay for the sins there. But look, IG again trying to fight back, trying to find ways that they can make picks happen. They're not going down without a fight. But the thing is, FPX are still keeping control of this game. Objective-wise, Terror down top, two down in mid. Now they can turn their attention towards this bottom side and enact this 1-3-1 one, one that they can go towards. But this here, LWX, taking that step too far. No Feather Storm, no Flash available, no right to be going that far forward. And IG will punish him and FPX at the end of that fight. This has been intense. And we have to talk about these AD carries again because... We had LWX getting a Kraken Slayer super early on into the game. He was so far ahead earlier. Not anymore. Wink has well and truly closed that gap. He's 3-0-0. Zero, zero. He's got two items for himself on this Kaiser. He's getting to the point in the game where he can start to assassinate people. And he can start to play a real threat alongside the rest of IG, right? Because you've got that rocket belt for the Shy. If he has this flash for this next dragon in 30 seconds, he can cause a ruckus in the middle of FPX, apply stacks everywhere, and have Wink have his pick of the litter. You're looking at Rookie as well that gets enabled in these team fights with CC, where he can dip, dive, dodge, and duck, but that's what the Shy needs to do. The cleanse came out. Nuggery can't quite knock him away from the tower. So the Shy still surviving in with the slicing maelstrom. Nuggery stunned. That is the assassin from Wink. But he does manage to quite find a kill right there. And now stuns across the team. FPX underneath the tower. But the tower shots are coming on through. They've gone too deep for this one. Rookie's arriving. And he wants to clean this one up. Featherstorm though. Dodges the stun. Triple for Bo. As they look for more under the tower. And that's a quadra for the Viking. Bo is huge in this game they cannot keep control of this rookie jungler once again that gore drinker coming in huge the earlier you get gore drinker the more value you get out of it the harder you are to deal with and you're seeing it here the sterics and the gore drinker for this viking means even if they can't knock the shy out from underneath the tower he can tank this fight for days. Bo goes low as Chris gets this in beautiful engage off, but it doesn't matter. Like, there's just so much survivability and damage churning out from this Viking and LWX as well. Perfectly positioned to just free fire this entire time. And FPX, what looked like a dodgy fight, are still able to come out on top. These are unbelievable fights that we're getting to witness right here. 6,000 gold lead almost in favor of FPX. Shun grabs himself the Scuttle Crab, which means that they will have at least some barren vision if FPX try and increase the pace and look towards that objective. 
They did get themselves the Drake while we were in that replay. So it is going to be two Drakes now in favor of FTX. And honestly, I'm just terrified of what Bo is bringing out here on this stage. This is one of the biggest test games for him. This is one of the most important matches where he has to prove himself. He beat Shun last time they met in the LDL, and he's looking to do the same thing again, this time in style. Barrett, already started by FBX. They want to bait a fight here, Dagda. They want to bait a pick. Oh. Doombie goes in. They've already found it. Is Shun forced away from the play? But he's not quite going to die just yet. And in goes Wink for the assassination. Beautifully done. Now Zonya's coming out from LWX. But Vanguard's edge. Can Rookie find his way in? The Shy slicing Maelstrom across the team. Can they find the stuns? The Shy goes down though. And it doesn't look like IG have the damage. FPX still surviving on this one. And Bo is unstoppable. He's 2 v one in on the back line. And he's winning it out comfortably. Undertow's come on through. And we got a back-to-back -back quadra on our hands. It's Ragnarok in the backline of FP or for IG is FPX. Bo is able to tear through everyone. The 14 kill Viking will not be silenced in this game number one. We asked what Bo and Shun had to bring to the LPL. And Bo says, I bring metal. I bring Vikings. I bring damage. 14, 1 and 3. Bo is looking just dominant in this game. But that's the thing. Like, this team fight looks so good for IG. They try to make this pick for FPX. Doesn't happen. Great job from Wink here to shut down Doombi, execute in the back line. And here, LWX is caught out. You're like, oh god, this is the fight. LWX has got to run away. He's in Featherstorm. He's getting jumped on by everyone. But it doesn't matter because they're not the carries anymore. It's Bo who's tearing through IG, running everyone down. These axes will not be stopped as they sling the blood of his enemies all over the rift. I mean, I've been that AD carry against a mega Olaf. There is nothing you can do. Wink knows that as he goes down at the end of the fight. And now with the Baron, surely this will be at least an in hit for FPX. Surely IG just have to respect this one. The Shy on the flank has the Slicing Maelstrom as Bowland. Dodges away from the knock up here. The Shy chased underneath the tower. Slicing Maelstrom goes in, but Bo, he's more than happy to take that tower all day long. The rest of the fight kicking off as they charge on forwards. Wink underneath the tower. Rookie getting low on health, but he's stunned up by the gold card. Should be taken down as well. The feathers coming in from LWX. Is Wink trying to survive, but he's taken underneath the Nexus towers. Bo is padding those stats as Nuggery. Taking a little bit longer than he needed to there. He goes down the thumbs up across the board. It's FBX in 23 minutes. Dominate IG in one of the most action-packed games of this entire season. I am actually speechless, Munchers. What did we just witness? FPX coming out of the gate. Non-stop action. Get the attention mid for Doomby. Suddenly Doomby's porting all over the map. And then you get Bo, who picks up, you know, ah, it's just one or two kills. Now it's three. Now it's four. Now it's 11. And suddenly he's 16 and one by the end of the game. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Bo was an absolute monster this game. And the, the thing that's so great to see as well is that FBX, I think, out of all of the teams in the LPL right, LPL? LPL right now, are the team that is the best at snow... Like, when they have an advantage, they will not give you a split second to think. They just play off of the tempo, off of the resets, and just push you for everything that they can. And IG, just suffering under the pressure. Yeah, and it's the beauty of FPX is how well they're able to orchestrate these map plays where they're grouping up and just outnumbering you in so many situations. Like, when you look at the stats for FPX, they have the highest joint kill participation on their team. Because we see plays like this, where it's, okay, we've got, like, one roam into the bot side, we're making this four-man play happen. Then we start to group up as a three, four-man unit once again, and we're diving mid, we're diving top, we're now fighting a dragon, we're making this pick happen before that all kicks off. But it's a group work. It's all pieces moving in tandem. And you could see there from the get-go, Bo getting this early play towards Doombi in the mid lane. Then it's Doombi roaming with Bo, making sure that you're able to get LWX and Crisp ahead. Like, Crisp, I don't think he was in the bot lane for like 90% of the early game. He <laughs> yeah. grouped up with Doombi and Bo to make sure they could run away with this game.
I mean, for most of the game, LWX was just on solo, clear the wave bot duty. You kept on seeing him dropping the thumbs up in that bottom lane saying, you don't get to dive me, I'm clearing the minions way too quick for you. I feel like Bo, when you look at this damage chart, he's just looked at Nuggery doing B and LWX. He's looked him dead in the eyes. He's like, look at me. I'm the carry now, all right? This game is me. I am proving myself. Shun is my old nemesis from the LDL. And I am here to show that I am the better jungler. But this is the thing. MVP from that LDL was Bo. And we were kind of looking going, hey, what do we expect from this guy? Because initially coming into FPX, there were some mistakes. He still looked nervous. You know, there was no. mistakes when it came to like Rift Herald placement, um, maybe not going for the dive as heavily as they'd want to, or even just his mistakes in team fights. But Bo, this game, didn't put a foot wrong. He knew exactly what game plan he wanted to enact. And even when you could see it where zoning multiple members off in team fights, and it wasn't even just for like getting them out of the fight it was to actually put them in the ground and just send them back to the base Bo looked amazing this game yeah he was zoning them on on the fountain for the next 30 seconds uh was, that was the kind of zoning that he was looking for this game unbelievable performance coming out from him and from the entire